guys, it's Sarah from Miss Adventure Pants with your weekly, I can't speak already, <laughs> with your weekly live cast. Um, how is everybody doing? As you um, join in, go ahead and um, comment so I know you're here. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know what you're doing this weekend. Hey, this is so cool. I'm just going to wait a couple minutes just because a lot of times it takes a couple minutes for people to join. Um, I'll show you my beer. I'm having a beer while we do this. <laughs> so this is the, the Brainless Raspberry from Epic Brewing, which is um, one of our favorite breweries here in Colorado. It's actually um, up in Rhino River North in kind of an old industrial neighborhood. It's con they've converted all the warehouses up there into kind of hip breweries and um, like eateries and it's great so um, sorry just playing with my phone <laughs> hi I can't see who's here for some reason I don't know this app is making me crazy but um, hello thank you for joining in it's so good to see you comment and tell me who you are so I can see because the app is not going to show me I don't think um, and tell me what you're doing this weekend. Um, I was supposed to be going up to climb a snow collar this weekend. We're going to climb kind of a steep one to get ready for Mount Rainier, which we're still hoping to do, even though we don't have our permits. But um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, some of you guys might be from outside of Colorado. Um, we're having a huge snowstorm here, and they're getting eight feet of snow between Wednesday and Friday up in the mountains. So that's just astounding to me. There's so much snow. <laughs> We're going to be climbing snow. Jenna, hello. How are you? It's good to see you. What are you doing this weekend? You can comment and tell me. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, eight feet of snow. Um, we, we're going to be climbing snow into August, September this year. I, I really think so. <laughs> There's so much up there. Okay, well, it's 7 o'clock, so um, I'm going to go ahead and start with our topic. So um, I, th I put it out on the Facebook um, that our topic that we're going to be talking about in this live chat is one of the most common questions we get on the blog, and it's how to get started with hiking and mountaineering. Jenna says, probably a local hike, maybe with snowshoes. <laughs> Jenna lives in Evergreen, which is um, in the foothills up above Denver. And they, you're how, do you know how much snow you're getting? You're probably going to get a couple feet, huh? <laughs> yeah, so she might be going out on snowshoes, even if she goes in her neighborhood. Um, but yeah, getting, getting started with hiking and, or hiking and mountain climbing is kind of intimidating, I think. Like, maybe people move to Colorado or Seattle for the first time. Oh, about 18 inches. <laughs> that is a lot <laughs> of snow, and she's really not that much further above Denver. Some melted and compressed. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a lot of snow. Um, but yeah, um, maybe you've moved to Denver from somewhere else or Seattle or maybe you're, you know, you're in someplace like Ohio or the South or and you're wondering, you know, how can I get started with hiking and mountain climbing? It sounds like a lot of fun. And the good news is no matter where you are, I really believe you can get started. Um, I really think there's two things you need when you're a beginner um, to get into it. And the first thing is skills. Um, and that kind of depends where you are and what you're doing. Obviously, if you're going to climb um, a big mountain, like a class five pitch with ropes, you need a lot of skills. Uh, but I think you also need skills if you're just going out and hiking with your friends. I think that's really important. You need to, uh, for example, here in Colorado, you need to know things like how to dress. So. If you get wet, you won't freeze and get hypothermia, which is actually one of the most dangerous things that is the number one reason for fatalities in Colorado amongst outdoors people is hypothermia, and that can happen even in the summer. So needing to know how to dress, um, how to, have, you know, where to get a map, how to follow it so that you don't get lost, um, how to get help if you do get lost, um, how to avoid hazards, things like lightning, things like avalanches, um, and these can happen anywhere. Um, I'm, talking, I'm kind of most familiar with Colorado, but you know, even when I'm from Ohio, so even when I was hiking there, we had things like lightning, and it could get really cold if you were wet. So anywhere you are, I think you really need skills. 
another thing you need is community. I think community is so important. Um, and I mean, Jenna, who's on here, and oh, someone else has joined. <laughs> um, I think anyone can attest that we make some of the best friends of our lives hiking and backpacking and mountain climbing. Um, it's wonderful. You really um, have a chance to be. It's one of the, the few places I feel like you can be with people now without being like people on their phones and people being very distracted by their social media. Um, at least here in Colorado, we don't get a signal up in the mountains. So everybody's completely offline. You really have to talk to each other like it's the 1990s. And <laughs> it really is just great for your relationships. There's people that I've been on backpacking trips with for a couple days that I just feel so close to. And it's just wonderful. Um, Another great thing about community is you can do things that maybe you can take a little bit more risk than you would if you're by yourself. Um, I'm going to talk about ways to meet people and learn skills in this, but there's, you know, there's no reason you can't do, um, you know, hikes you feel comfortable with by yourself. Um, obviously have a way to communicate, have a way to um, <laughs> know what you're doing, but um, you know, easy stuff. We all do it by ourselves, but if you want to take a risk, if you want to do something harder, if you want to step it up a notch, you're definitely going to want to find people to do that with. So, so where do you find people and where do you learn skills? Um, let me give you a couple of places you can look. Um, number one is um, there's a lot of big national outdoor clubs and regional outdoor clubs that are really great. Um, here in Colorado, we have Colorado Mountain Club um, up in the Pacific Northwest. Um, they have something called the Mountaineers. My friend who moved here from California was really active in the Sierra Club. And then out on the East Coast, things like the Appalachian Mountain Club are really big. So a lot of times these clubs will have local chapters, they'll lead hikes where you can just all get together and go hiking. A lot of times they'll also offer classes. Um, I know some of the, I've learned like, <laughs> I've gone from just being like a regular hiker who just walks around to now I can climb snow, now I can climb some easy rock. Um, I'm going to Bolivia to climb a 21,000 foot mountain in September. And those are all things that I learned in Colorado Mountain Club. They have very inexpensive classes that are taught by volunteers that are they're pretty good. Um, they Another great thing about some of these clubs is you can get great discounts. One thing you're going to find when you start hiking is you're going to want to buy more gear and more clothing. And um, <laughs> even just for hiking, you're going to want to buy like a better rain jacket. Um, you're going to be probably out more in more rain, more snow. Um, so um, Colorado Mountain Club has amazing discounts. You can get the same pro deals that like maybe people in the army or people in the um, Alpine rescue team that goes and rescues people off the mountain um, and people that work in the outdoor industry basically are on the same website they are getting 50 to 70% off many awesome things. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, the downside to belonging to a big national outdoors club, you have to pay dues. I think in ours it's $75 a year. Um, and there's also a lot of rules if you go on a hike um, because the hikes are, because the, the club is responsible for you. You know, you have to hike together. You have to look out for one another. You know, basically the leader makes decisions because they're responsible. So in some ways that's great. Um, the leaders in these clubs do tend to be pretty um, well vetted. But, you know, if you're a person that just likes to do your own thing, I think it can be a little bit tough. So big national outdoors clubs, um, definitely one place to look. If there's no club by you or, you know, if you're maybe wanting to, you know, have something additional, another really good one is Meetup, uh, meetup.com, it's a website, and what you can do is go in there, put your interests, whether that's hiking, rock climbing, mountain biking, um, there's meetups for just about everything, like I'm constantly surprised in kind of like every little niche of hiking and every little outdoor activity. There's caving meetups. There's probably things I can't even think of. Um, so what meetup is, it's, it's just very informal. Somebody decides they want to start a little hiking club. Um, the, they're called an organizer and they, they'll send out an email like, hey, I'm leading a hike to uh, Mount Falcon and we're all going to meet in this place. We're all going to carpool over. Here's what the hike is like. Um, if you want to join, go ahead and you just basically hit a button and sign up. 
Um, so where I am in Denver, meetups are a huge thing. Like, it's awesome. Um, when I first moved to Denver, um, I was in like a lot of hiking meetups and then also just a lot of social meetups. Like you can do things like, hey, let's all go to the rodeo or let's all go to a concert. Uh, there's just really, I belong to like 30 meetups and that was my entire social life. And for years, all my friends and still many of them are friends I met in meetup. <laughs> um, but meetup is great. It's a great place for hiking. Um, another thing you could do, if you're in a place, like, um, I had a friend that was recently living in Austin who just moved back here, but when he was in Austin, there weren't, there wasn't a hiking club, so he started a hiking meetup in Austin, and it's, um, about 15 bucks a month to start your own meetup. I think he teamed up with one other person to kind of split the cost and keep it reasonable, and so they led hikes all over Austin, so that's, of course, something you can do if, um, there's just not a lot by you. Um, kind of a downside of meetups is it can be a little bit willy-nilly. Um, <laughs> I actually um, was on a meetup where I got left at the trailhead in the middle of um, the Roosevelt National Forest. Hey, Don. Hello. Ah, it's so good to see you. What are you doing this weekend, Don? You can comment. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, like you meet up, you know, you just never know. Like I was left in the middle of Roosevelt National Forest by the person I was carpooling with. Um, also meetup leaders, like anyone can start a meetup, right? The person doesn't necessarily know what they're doing that's organizing the meetup. Um, one of my favorites in Colorado was um, I saw someone um, post a meetup and they're like, we're going to go climb Mount Yale, which is this huge mountain that's about three hours away. Oh, and Don says, sleeping. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. It's going to be like a good weekend for kind of doing nothing here since we're getting so much snow. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so with the meetup, um, so this person posted um, that they wanted to climb Mount Yale. It's very, very far. It's like three hours driving from where we're at. Um, and they wanted to leave Denver at 8 o'clock. And if you live here, one thing you realize about Colorado is you want to climb really, really early, especially on big mountains. You want to be down before noon. Uh, because we have lightning danger in the summertime, so <laughs> um, if you knew what you were doing, you'd probably see that meetup and be like, no way, <laughs> not a good idea. Um, so yeah, it's fine to go on meetups, it's great to go on meetups. Make sure when you're going on a meetup, you kind of know what you're doing and you're not relying on the person that's organizing it. Um, it should be something that you could do reasonably by yourself. Um, and as you do more meetups, you will meet leaders that you trust more and you kind of get to know their skills and then you maybe can do some more challenging things with them. Um, <laughs> so meetup, meetup is another great one. Um, another thing you can, another place you can look for um, community for skills classes is outdoor stores. Um, REI here actually does a ton of awesome classes. Um, I had a couple mountaineering students that wanted to take Rock Rescue and Colorado Mountain Club, just the, time, the timing of it when it was offered didn't work for them. So they're like, we're going to get an REI and take it. And I'm like, oh gosh, I, I hope you live. But they actually had a wonderful experience and they had great things to say about REI. They thought it was actually taught by um, people from a mountain school, like a private mountain school that's near here. Um, the people were certified, which I'm personally not. They were like AMGA, which is the gold standard guides. And the class wasn't super expensive, so they really had a great experience. Um, another great thing our REI does is they have um, climbing wall nights, and they actually have some that are all for women, which can be a lot of fun if um, you want to meet other women that climb. Um, uh, I know some people that have really enjoyed that. Um, oh, <laughs> I get the news on my phone, so I'm like super <laughs> distracted. I'm like, what's going on with Trump? <laughs> and something just popped up on the screen. It wasn't about Trump. There's no news. Um, so yeah, um, I know um, where I'm from in Ohio, the backpacking shop and some of the smaller outfitters will actually do classes and trips. Um, so definitely that's another great place to check. Um, another place to check is parks, um, national parks, 
state parks, your local park system, a lot of them do programming that can be really great. They'll teach skills, they'll lead hikes. Um, a really great example, my mom came out here and we, I took her snowshoeing for the first time in Rocky Mountain National Park and um, we got to Nymph Lake, which is this little tiny lake that's like a mile from the trailhead. And it was like she had climbed Mount Everest. She was so excited. She's like, I'm going to snowshoe when I go back to Ohio. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, you know, I'm totally wrong. Um, the, she lives near Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And they actually do snowshoeing classes, snowshoeing trips. And they also do cross-country skiing trips and classes. <laughs> so um, she looked and found that and I never would have guessed, but yeah, definitely check it out. Um, so parks are another great place to look. Um, I mentioned private schools. Um, here in Colorado, we have something called Colorado Mountain School, which is great. They offer like tons of classes. Um, they're a bit more on the expensive side, but obviously you're going to get top-notch instruction. So they do everything from rock climbing, avalanche awareness, um, you know, basic just hiking classes. Um, they do a lot of great technical stuff. And so you can kind of look and see what's near you. Um, if you have some, if you really want to progress quickly, um, oh, thank you. <laughs> if you really want to progress quickly, sometimes it's nice. You can actually get some one-on-one -on -one instruction and not have to be in a class from somebody who's very qualified. Um, that's definitely the place to go. Just look for out, like private guides and climbing schools in your area. Um, and kind of my last tip, so those are the places I would look. Um, as you're um, meeting people and starting to hike and joining some meetups, maybe joining some clubs, taking some schools, taking some classes, definitely start to gather the people on your own either email list or maybe into a Facebook group if, you, you know, if you're kind of in the demographic where a lot of people are on Facebook. Um, I think I have an email list personally, and I think it's great. Um, it's kind of like everybody I've ever met from Colorado Mountain Club, from Meetup, from the different things I do, just random people I meet. I'm like, get on my email list. And then when I want to go hiking, I just email everyone. I use a program called MailChimp, and it's super easy. Um, and that's been really great. It's been just nice to be able to kind of make my own community and hike with who I want to hike with and also go where I want to go. I'm like, I want to climb Angel of Shavano this weekend. I'm going to send it out on my email list and I'm for sure going to almost find, for sure find two or three people that are excited to do that with me. So those are some tips on getting started with hiking and mountain climbing and all of your things outdoors. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, it's been really awesome to talk to you. It's been awesome to have some live people on here. Jenna, Don, um, one other person who did not, I wish it would tell me the name. I might just be distracted and not actually seeing it when it's popping up. Um, but yeah, it's just wonderful to talk to you. Um, if you have any questions, this video will be on the Facebook page. You can definitely pop on there. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope sleeping, hiking in the snow, whatever you're going to do in this crazy weekend in Colorado um, is a lot of fun. And I will talk to you at this time next week. Bye.